Fucking moron. Everybody, welcome back to another episode of Pass Middle Age Point, and this time we're in a different location, my living room. But before we talk about that, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe on the video, and hit the notification bell so you never ever miss a video. Now, let's get to the point. So today, I'm going to talk about Wonder Woman 84. I just finished watching it, and this is going to be something called Beer in a Movie. So today, I decided to have uh, Death of Dec Decency which is at 18th Street Brewery, which is from Hammond. Um, I decided to have one of those beers while I was watching the movie. Got it right here. And uh, let's just get into the movie right now. I'll tell you my uh, overall experience at the end of the movie. But to begin with, let's talk about the opening scene. The, the scene in Themyscira was amazing. Her as a little girl, uh, just showing you how much promise that she had to become Wonder Woman. Um, and then right from there, it jumps to uh, 1984, where there's a mall rescue. Now, that was her first kind of reveal as Wonder Woman in the movie. I thought it was very cool. <clears throat> they go into this thing about how she's missing Steve Trevor, which, you know, I, I get it. That's her love and everything. But I wasn't really a huge, huge fan of the fact that Steve Trevor became like a main part of the movie because it really didn't have a lot to do with what was going on. I, I guess uh, it helps her overcome something later on in the movie, but to me, the, the whole love story part of it was a little weird. Um, you also have uh, Barbara Minerva, who was played by Kristen Wiig, who is Cheetah. Um, and to me, she was very good in, in the role Obviously, at the beginning of when you first meet Barbara Minerva, she plays her dorky, Kristen Wiig, normal self. But as the movie progresses, she gets a little bit uh, meaner, more aggressive. Barbara. What? I can't let you stop Max. She starts to develop her powers, and her character kind of changes a little bit. I thought Kristen Wiig did a great job from what I expected her to be in the actual movie. So to me, that, that was pretty cool. And then um, there's this wishing artifact, and that's kind of how they bring back um, Steve Trevor, uh, which I thought was, yeah, it's a typical comic book type thing. It was just weird because Steve Trevor comes back in another person's body, uh, which I thought was very One of the best odd. parts to me of the whole movie is Maxwell Lord, played by Pedro Pascal, who is the Mandalorian as well. Um, he was excellent. His acting in it was great. Uh, Pedro Pascal is like, he is like the it guy right now. He's a hot commodity. And part of the reason is because he is a great actor. I, I enjoyed watching him in that. I mean, to me, every scene he was in, he was basically stealing it. I really enjoyed that part of it. Um, another thing I really enjoyed about the movie is the depiction of the 1980s. I thought was great. All the costume design and set design and, and everything that was playing as well as everything that was playing as in music, uh, TV, movies, any of that stuff. I thought that was very cool. There's a little scene where Steve Trevor changes clothes a bunch of times into a bunch of different 80s outfits. That was pretty cool because it was very, very spot on with the 80s. So I really thought that was sweet. The Invisible Plane makes an appearance, which uh, if you don't know and didn't read the comics or watch the cartoons growing up, uh, Wonder Woman has an invisible plane that she flies around in. Second. At the controls of her thought power transparent plane, Wonder Woman commands the motor to switch on and the plane begins to taxi toward the hangar door. I thought that was pretty uh, clever how they put it in there, how she has this extra ability to make the plane invisible. Um, so that was pretty uh, pretty neat, caught me off guard actually. So I, I enjoyed that. And then uh, as Cheetah developed her powers, there's a big fight scene in the White House with Wonder Woman and Cheetah. That was, I enjoyed how Cheetah kind of beats her up because that is, you know, in the comic books, that's her main foe. So you would expect her to get beat up by her a little bit. Um, there is a scene where Wonder Woman learns how to fly. That, to me, is probably the best scene in the whole movie. 
because you know if you watch the Justice League cartoons as I, as I did growing up, that she can fly. She doesn't need that invisible plane. She doesn't need someone to take her to and from. She can fly herself. For me, that was a highlight of the whole film. Um, that really got to me that like, hey, cool, she can finally learn how to fly. The actual Cheetah reveal itself, when you first see Kristen Wiig as Cheetah, I just, I don't know if I wasn't in all the way with it or I wasn't sold on it all the way, but to me, the, her makeup, CGI, whatever they did, I just wasn't a real big fan of the way Cheetah looked. And it, it's gotta be, they're just, it's too much CGI maybe for me. I, I don't know, that's just me personally. Um, and then the actual, like the Wonder Woman suit reveal of the, the angel wings behind her, uh, it was different. I don't know if I was that big of a fan of the suit itself, you know, all gold like that. I like her traditional, you know, uh, red and blue Wonder Woman outfit. Um, so, I mean, it, it wasn't terrible. The, the, that fight scene was, uh, it was all right. It wasn't the greatest. Um, and then the ending, to me, the ending kind of sucked. Uh, honestly, I just don't understand like how you renounce your wishes and that's how you defeat Maxwell Lord, even though he's more powerful than anybody. So they have like a small anti-climactic fight with her and Cheetah and then Maxwell Lord and her don't even fight. So to me, it's like, I don't know. I expect more action from a superhero movie. Now, on my Instagram, I uh, gave it a 7 out of 10. But the more I think about it, the more I review over some of the notes that I took during the movie, I'd probably end up giving it a 6 out of 10. It, it just wasn't that good for me. It wasn't... And it could be maybe because the whole theater thing. You're not out in the theaters. You're not enjoying it you know, in the big screen in a movie theater, uh, nice and dark with snacks. I mean, you could pause this whenever you want. You could look at your phone. There's nothing stopping you from that. And maybe that was part of it. it I wasn't in that theater going experience. Or maybe I didn't have that because the movie wasn't that good. I just wasn't entranced into the movie like I get in some. I didn't like how basically Cheetah loses her powers right away. Like that's Wonder Woman's big foe. Like I was expecting her to stick around for a while. So, I, that just wasn't that wasn't good for me neither was the whole Maxwell Lord turning into a good person after being a bad person the whole entire movie uh, that, that's another knock for me man I, I just really did not like that it, it just doesn't make any sense I want to see my hero whether it's a man or a, or a female it, it doesn't matter to me I could do either superheroes but think about the first Wonder Woman and how she fought Ares and now you turn around and she doesn't fight anybody really at the end of the movie. I mean, at least the big baddie. I, I, I don't know. I, I wasn't really into that. Um, another thing for me, there just wasn't as much action as I expected from Wonder Woman. You know, after seeing the first one, re-watching the first one, and then watching this, you're thinking, man, this is going to be great. Not enough action. And to me, they basically turned the movie into a love story which I wasn't really a fan of. And I'm not saying that there's not room for love stories in superhero movies, because there absolutely is. But to make the movie itself a, a love story, it's a superhero movie. I want to see my superheroes kick some ass. That's what I'm here to watch, action. Just like when I read comic books, I'm there for the action, not for the love. But if there's a love story in it, like Thor, then yeah, but it's not the main part of the whole movie. So, like I said, for me, I'd give it a 6 out of 10. Personally, don't waste your time getting HBO Max just to watch this movie. If you have HBO Max, it's got good stuff on it and it's worth having. But if you are on the fence about whether or not to get HBO Max just to watch Wonder Woman 84, I would say don't do it. Wait for something else to come out on HBO Max before you decide to download that. And I also see that they've already greenlit Wonder Woman 3, which means there is some sort of semblance to HBO Max must be getting a ton of new subscribers just for Wonder Woman. Now, that's great for HBO Max and it's great for things to come, but to me, the movie just wasn't that good. If you guys have anything else to add to the video, comment down below and let me know what you think about the whole movie. Also, I'd like to do more of these uh, beer and movie reviews for you guys. So, let me know if there's a movie I should check out that's new or a beer that you've had that I should try. But the video's over, guys. Don't worry. 
We'll be back again next week.